Hello and welcome to the Made Summit 2020. My name is Melissa Maker and I'm going to be giving a talk today all about setting boundaries with customers and staff and how that actually helps you grow your business. But before I get into this, what sounds like therapy for your business, I'm just going to quickly qualify who I am so that you know a little bit more about me. But I'm also going to tell you that in the box down below, you'll see lots of information about where you can find me and learn more about me. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. Um, but I've been running my cleaning business called Clean My Space in my hometown of Toronto since 2006. We've survived the 2008 economic crash and COVID, so I'm really proud of that. Uh, in 2011, I started making YouTube videos all about cleaning, and we have over 1.5 million subscribers there. We've got a website, Instagram account, all with the same name, Clean My Space, as well as a book. Uh, and a line of microfiber cleaning cloths called Makers Clean. So again, you can learn a lot more about me and you can also see where you can find me on Instagram and YouTube and online right down there. But moving all of that aside, I want to actually get into the topic of the day for me at least, which is all about setting boundaries. I'm very picky about growth strategies for my business. And I like to bring in things that I've seen work successfully in other areas of my life into the business world. So that's why I thought this would be a really unique, kind of cool and very helpful topic to cover off today. Here's some of the things you're gonna learn in our chat. Um, now I know that this might sound like couples therapy, but I want you to bear with me because this, to me, this is a real breakthrough, uh, especially for people who are kind of new to the business or people who feel like they're really stuck in a rut and they can't grow past a certain level where they're at. What we're gonna talk about are five key tactics to get square pegs to fit into the square holes that are your business. Your business is just gonna be one big square hole and you wanna find lots of square pegs to go in there instead of those pesky round pegs that are messing you up. We're also gonna talk about how boundaries actually help to improve your business and set it up to scale and train and make marketing much easier uh, and how it reduces friction between cleaners and customers and how you can easily funnel out potential clients right off the bat because you're so clear about what you can offer. So tell me if this sounds familiar to you. How upsetting is it when you bring on a client and they keep kind of pushing you past what you think is reasonable? Here you've worked so hard, you know, you've built this amazing business and in your head you have this perfect service offering, but you have five client type A's who love what you do and then you have this one client type B, let's call them, who takes up the majority of your time with extra requests and drama because what you're offering doesn't seem to really suit them and they want you to do something about it. These people are exhausting. They're very taxing on resources and your emotions. They ask you, you know, why things weren't done, but you think, hey, we never really formally agreed to this. So that shows me that there's a disconnect between expectations, and I hear this from cleaning business owners all the time. So what's the recipe for success here? Rules, boundaries, healthy relationships, they require boundaries. If you've ever gone for couples therapy, you will know this, whether it's between partners or parents or children or colleagues or clients, whatever the case may be, boundaries make the world run smoothly. And when there's not boundaries in place, that's when we run into trouble because one person's vision differs from another and then we can't make the other party satisfied. So without them, we start to feel taken advantage of, like we're increasingly unable to please the other party and we're exhausted because we're constantly having to fight this invisible battle, you see, because there's this dissonance between parties about what should be. I have a, a daughter, she's two and a half years old, and I have found that parenting a toddler is a lot like running a business. We have a rule book and we stick to it. Now, yes, we do have a little bit of flexibility, but having these rules or these boundaries in place does help a toddler feel safe, more comfortable. They know what the rules are, they can stick to it. It also makes parenting a much more seamless experience because both my husband and I know how to react in a certain situation. And then my daughter knows what to expect. So just in general makes family life easier as we go through stages of boundary testing with a toddler. 
you know, while it might be frustrating at times, we all, my husband and I, we stick to the rules uh, and everybody knows what to expect, including my daughter. So it just makes things more harmonious. It's not always perfect, but it's much easier to do and it's much more peaceful. So the way that boundaries can help your business, well, here's the thing. I've always been a firm believer in making things very clear, almost to a point where my staff kind of get annoyed about it. But I really believe that if you repeat things over and over again and you have a very clear script and you constantly message the same thing over and over, it sticks, right? And that's what we have to do with our customers too. We want to find those square pegs to fit into the square hole of our business. Standardizing your service offering makes your business scalable and easier to manage. And the way to build this is to have a unique idea about what your cleanings should look and feel like and what the customer experience should be. That is a standardized service offering. Now, this is key. If you don't have one of those, you have to stop everything and you have to develop that. You need to have standardized service offerings in order for any of this to work in order for your business to grow. Because if you're just sending someone out to do a three hour cleaning, who knows what that's gonna look like. Your results are gonna be all over the place. There's gonna be a lot of confusion and discomfort among staff and customers. So by standardizing your offering, you can then start to set your boundaries and we'll talk about the how. Um, cleaning, here's the thing, it's very subjective. It varies in your eyes, in your employees' eyes, and in your customers' eyes. So if you don't standardize it, we all have different opinions about what a clean kitchen should look like. Whereas if it's now standardized, now everyone knows what to expect. It's very clear. It's very straightforward. You can train on it. You can market on it. You can sell on it. And you can go back to it when there's a customer complaint, right? Because everything is standardized. You know, when you order a car, let's say you got a, a Chevrolet Malibu. You know exactly what that car is going to look like. Sure, you can pick the color and the model, but you're going to get that standard car. It's very objective. Cleaning, if you're not defined, if you haven't developed your Chevrolet Malibu or service offering, no one knows what to expect. No one knows how to clean to meet that unspoken need. So that's why all of this is so important. Boundaries are crucial when it comes to growing your business. Not only having this standardized service offering, but then building boundaries around that. That is what's going to allow you to grow and scale your business and create the least amount of friction between all of your stakeholders. So if you don't set boundaries, you're probably going to expect or you will probably have experienced calls like this. I sure know I have. Uh, I'm wondering if you can iron and do the laundry and I have this linoleum stain in my laundry room on the floor It's been there for like 20 years and I haven't been able to get rid of it I'm gonna need you guys to take care of that Now you're a business owner and you're thinking you know what? I really want to grow my business and I don't want to say no I'm you know, I'm trying to get as many bookings as I can. So what do you do? You say sure we'll do our best and that is one of the worst things you can do because now what you're doing is you're putting yourself and your staff behind the eight ball. There's this shoot up of stress because your staff probably don't know how to iron or do laundry if that's not part of your service offering. They, they might do it at home, but they don't know how to do it professionally. And removing the linoleum stain, there are so many variables in that scenario how are we to know if they're going to be successful? What if they use a product or a tool or a technique that they've never used before and they end up injuring themselves or damaging the floor? Then you've got a big liability on their hands. You've told this customer you're going to do your best and you're predicating a future relationship, you know, a re of regular service on nailing all of this stuff. Like imagine how stressed out you're going to be and how your customer is going to be sitting there just waiting to see the results and how your staff are just going to feel like they're behind the eight ball. It's just this anxiety provoking scenario. You're setting your team up for failure and your customer is likely not going to be happy. So if all of that stuff, the laundry, the ironing, the stain on the linoleum floor, if that is not part of your standard service offering, um, that is where you're going to get yourself in trouble. The temptation of saying yes to new business versus being really clear and saying, I can't do that, actually. That's not part of our standard service offering, right? That's how businesses um, kind of screw up in this growth mode, you know, because they're saying yes to things that they, they don't know how to do 
um, or that they can't do efficiently or well. Ultimately, you know, in that scenario, the vision that the customer had and the vision that you had and the vision that your staff had we're all relying upon subjectivity instead of objectivity. We should all know what our cleaning is going to look like. So that way there's no wavering from that set of expectations. You might have also had a call like this. I don't know why so-and-so didn't clean the light fixtures. Uh, and you're just like, because we never clean light fixtures. But if you're not communicating that clearly to your customers, then of course they're going to be frustrated that it's not done. Now, six out of 10 people might not care but you might have four customers who do. So that's why the clearer you are about what you can and cannot do, and the better your training is surrounding those boundaries, not only to the people who book your cleaning, but to the people that execute your cleaning, the better the expectation of your customers will be managed so that they can be happier with the work that you can perform instead of frustrated with the work that you're not performing, right? Because there's no need in them thinking that you know you can do any and all cleaning tasks in their home. There's a level of what's reasonable and that is up to you to set. So now that we understand what the issues are, we're gonna talk about how to deal with them. We're gonna talk about five key tactics on how to fix this problem and get square pegs to fit into the square holes that is your business or are your business. All right, so the first one is to think about how you talk to your potential customers. I'm big into scripts. I'm not saying you have to read off a script, but eventually if you're booking day in, day out, you're gonna get used to saying the same thing over and over again, and just stick to the script. So know what you can and cannot say. We can do this, we cannot do that, but the one thing you don't wanna say is, yeah, we'll try our best, or we can pretty much do whatever you need, or yeah, we'll make your place sparkle. Being ambiguous is really going to cause you problems here. Like McDonald's is not ambiguous about their hamburger recipe. Their line cooks do not have the discretion to create a burger however which way they like. They know exactly how that burger should be created. Now, you can say, I don't want pickles or I want extra onions, but, and, and there's like a little bit of wiggle room there, and I think we should all have that slight bit of flexibility among what, you know, our offerings are, but it can't go past that. And if the customer doesn't like the McDonald's version of a hamburger, they can go to Burger King or to another burger restaurant and get exactly what they are looking for. That's not McDonald's fault. McDonald's very clear about what they offer. And they've sold billions of hamburgers, just as an aside. Next, um, think about what your website and your marketing say about your offerings. Are you very clear about what you offer? Do you have a checklist that you present on your website and states very clearly what you can and cannot do? Or do you say something really nebulous like, our cleaners are amazing and you can expect a fabulous cleaning each time? What does that even mean? I don't know. But if I'm a customer, I want a fabulous cleaning. And in my head, I know what a fabulous cleaning looks like to me, but that might not be what my next door neighbor thinks a fabulous cleaning looks like. And that sure might not be what you or your staff think a fabulous cleaning looks like. So if you can clarify right on your website and in your marketing materials exactly what a customer is to expect, and of course you can take that into your training as well. So when you're training your staff, exactly how they should be cleaning to nail all of those offerings that you're marketing and selling over the phone, now everybody's on the same page. So just be very clear and sort of audit your marketing and your website materials to make sure that you are being clear, okay? And if you're not, that's an area of improvement. Number three, um, when you're booking your business, be very clear during the booking process. That is one of the key reasons I don't love just doing online bookings. I actually think cleaning is such a high touch service that you do need to speak to people and you have to make sure that you're aligned. You have to make sure that when you're stepping into someone's home, they're prepared and willing to accept what it is that you are offering. And if you guys aren't on the same page, the cleaning shouldn't happen because people aren't going to be happy with the results. So when you are chatting with someone, remember to stick to that script. They might say to you, um, you know, do you do laundry? And what you can say is, 
Actually, we have a 30-point checklist that we follow, and I'm happy to send it to you. Laundry isn't included on there, but the 30 things that we do on there really leave your house looking amazing. Whereas if you say something like, eh, I'll see if we have time, maybe not, maybe, like if your staff aren't trained on how to do laundry really well, they might shrink some really expensive clothes or mix up colors, and you'll have a load of whites that are now pinks, right? Because they did something wrong, and that's just going to cause you problems. So just think about that and be very clear with your customers when you're on the phone with them. Be clear about what you can do and be clear about what you cannot do. And if they're not okay with the things that you can't do, it is so much better for both parties for them to find someone who can satisfy their needs. You also want to be mindful of red flags. So anything that comes up that you notice on the phone that uh, might be a concern. So if you notice someone is trying to push the boundaries or push it with you, that's someone who you don't want to bring in as a customer because that's someone who's going to cause you problems. Because if they're pushing it with you on the phone during an initial booking, how is it going to turn out when, a, when an employee of yours goes to their house and they start to push it with them? Those are difficult people. Um, they might be lovely or they might be brash, but those are people that I just say, you know what, I actually, I don't know if we're the best fit for you. You might want to go to another service um, company that might have something that's more aligned with your needs. There's nothing wrong with that. It always sucks to turn clients away, but I feel like when you turn away clients that don't fit into your business model, you're actually doing yourself a huge favor and you're keeping a space open for someone who is just begging for the exact service that you're offering. The next thing is you want to make sure that you get your staff on board. So from training day onward, when they first come in, they have to be very, very clear in their understanding of what your boundaries are, what you're willing to do as a company and what you're not willing to do as a company. And they have to be good at saying no. I always tell my staff, we're not in the volunteer business, we're in the cleaning business. So if a client asks you to do something, um, it's perfectly within your right to say, I can't do that because that's not what's been agreed to. But if all of a sudden they say, sure, I'll you know, clean the wine cellar today and that wasn't in the agreed upon service, well, then the next time we go back, if it's a different employee, um, that employee might not clean the wine cellar and then or that employee might say no about the wine cellar and then the customer is going to think that we're being difficult. Whereas at the beginning, that first person should have never agreed to clean the wine cellar. So if you have an employee that is repeatedly unable to say no and stick to the boundaries, that's actually going to be problematic for you going forward with that person. So you have to have a conversation with them or think about how you can train them on boundaries. And the same thing goes for the people who are doing the bookings over the phone. You want to make sure that they are really clear on their boundaries too. You might have a cat visitor in a second. I'm just going to try and keep her out of the picture. Um, but just keep in mind, you know, as we come to a close, a business that has clients who all want and expect the same thing is much easier to run than a business that has clients uh, and staff and stakeholders with vastly dispersed interests. You really can't scale a business like that. It will stay small forever. And while it sounds nice to have a customizable plan where you can do a little bit of this for one client and a little bit of that for another, the reason why your business is going to struggle is because there's a lack of consistency. It's hard to train on that. It's hard to book on that. And it's hard to consistently have clients happy with what you're offering. When you have an upset client, you can always come back to the script, right? Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, we actually told, you know, we were really clear. Like we told you that we don't do laundry. Uh, you know, if, if that's something that you want, you might have to find another cleaning service that can do laundry for you. Right. So if you're clearer with them and you're always sticking to the script and you're being kind, but you're being firm, that really helps people decide, well, the rest of their cleaning is great. I guess I can deal with the laundry thing myself, or you know what? I, I do need to find a cleaning service that can do laundry, but you, your core business competencies are non-negotiable and that is what's going to help your business grow. They have to know what they can expect at each cleaning and your staff have to know what they need to do at each cleaning and how they need to do it so that there's no wavering and everything can be standardized and improved upon with each service. That is how you're going to get repeat business and that is how your business is going to grow. So I hope that this helps you. Again, there's a lot of info down below about where you can find me. Um, 
You can find me on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker, also at Clean My Space. My YouTube channel is called Clean My Space. We've got our website out there. And I will also tell you that I have a course on how to build a cleaning business that's called The Decision Maker. And you can find that at thedecisionmaker.com. Oh, there's my 20 minute timer. All right. Well, that puts me right out of time. I wish you well. Stay healthy, stay safe, and good luck growing your business.